What surprised me most was that I wasn't. I knew this was coming to me, even if it were not yesterday. I knew it would come sooner or later. And now all I can do is bet on a lawyer I've never met. Okay, Mr. Crawford, before we start, you want to meet you with your lawyer in the lounge first. Is he already here? Yes, he is. This way, please. (sighs) 
You won't have too much time, but it should be enough. Just come out when you hear the alarm. All right, I'll leave you two to it. Hello, Mr. Crawford. Uh, hi. You're not the lawyer. I won't beat around the bush here. Do you know who I am? Well, I guess you're Quinn, the lawyer I called last night, aren't you? Do you really think you just happened to find a lawyer's name card in your room right when you needed one? Who are you? We talked on the phone recently, not last night. Remember now? Oh, God, the man from D's? I, uh, sorry, I don't quite remember. Of course you do. You're just afraid of saying it out. Nice to finally meet you in person, Mr. Crawford. Listen, I know it may seem counterintuitive, but this room is actually safe. The great people exchange their little secrets here, too. We'll just have to be careful if anyone suddenly comes in. Why are you here? I'm here because you need me and I need you. Are you really a lawyer? No, but it doesn't matter. You've seen what happened to Owen, haven't you? Having a lawyer won't change anything. You can never win the game by playing their rules. What does that mean? Haven't you noticed? The so-called distribution system is nothing but a lie. They're just using it to ma manipulate food and people to, to their advantage. Haven't figured out the details yet, but it being a lie has been confirmed again through Owen's trial. What? How? The logic they used against Aaron was flawed, because Aaron only took black bottles off the belt, and black bottles couldn't possibly be counted in. Our friends out there in the front lines only put them in the sorting machine after the government gatherers left. And plus, if the government did find out, would, why would they let a suspicious item pass in the first place? So Aaron, he didn't point it out because he knew that it would be equal to admitting a more severe crime. Exactly, and the government seems to know that as well. Okay, in short, every food inspector that helped us is now exposed and the government is coming for them sooner or later. So best case scenario, you would lose your job. For worse, you might end up in prison or even be exiled. God, what should I do? I have a plan. But this plan, you may not like it. What is it? We'll talk later in this room again. Now let's just go out there and face some accusations. and Mr. Cox and Mr. Cox. The trial will start in a minute. Please sit and wait here for the calling. Good evening, dear citizens. Today we'll continue with the case of Food Inspector Ned Crawford. Concrete evidence will be provided and some witnesses will be present. Also, the great ones who decided to broadcast this trial live to the entire city. They think it's important to reaffirm our stand and safeguarding our people's interests. Okay, let's bring the defendant on the stage. Here I call Ned Crawford. Mr. Crawford, do you have a lawyer or are you going to defend yourself? Uh, yes, I do have a lawyer. All right, start bringing his lawyer on stage. Please introduce yourself. Sure, my name is Clinton Cox, a general practice lawyer, and I'll be defending Mr. Crawford for the rest of this trial. Good, let's get started. As mentioned yesterday, we found that Mr. Crawford has been taking items off the belt without consent. We invited senior official Rupert Ryan here to elaborate on that matter. Please come up to the stage. Rupert, you betray him. Greetings, everyone. I'm asked, be, I'm asked to be here today to discuss Mr. Crawford's case, mainly because I was in charge of his employee survey about a week ago, and something he said there might be able to show you who he is apart from what he did. So first, about what he did, Mr. Crawford started working as a food inspector from July 30th this year. So far, we have this work records of all 46 days since then. According to the investigation, there's at least one item that went missing from his belt. Well, in other words, he stole one item from work. It doesn't really matter if that item numbers 1 or 100. The same conclusion is, he clearly committed the crime of malfeasance. things you said might show us who he is. It's coming right up, Your Honor. It seems to me Mr. Crawford is not only criminal but also one with serious court problems. And that means he may do things that are way more dangerous than malfeasance. In the survey, he disguised himself as a man who outlawed the law. He said he'd report his father immediately if he found out what his father did. And he took violation of the law for granted just as his father. He said inspectors who took food off the belt should be punished harshly. But that's what he did himself. Actually, my guess is he even took things off the belt after him. Now we should have an idea of what kind of persons we're dealing with. That's all I've got to say. 
Maybe I should have said something back different back then. Thank you so much for your testimony, Mr. Ryan. I'm just doing my job. Sure, keep up the good work. And you may need the stage now. Well, I think that what Mr. Ryan said should be enough to draw attention to Vengeance alleged fourth crime. Before we bring it out to our next witness, do you have anything for us, Mr. Fox? Yes, after hearing what Mr. Ryan said, I think there's little arguing with the facts of the malfeasance. But in terms of penalty, shouldn't we consider that he is just a first offender? New to the court, Mr. Cox. You know we don't do first offender or other differentiation in Eden. I know, just to be sure. I suppose even the great ones will be judged on the same basis. Is it correct? Yes, it is. I see. Thank you. As for the charge of fraud crime, I do believe more evidence is needed. Sure, that's what we're going to do. Let's bring out our next witness then. Here I call Damien Colosov. Demian, you traitor. Demian, your honour, dear judges, I didn't tell them anything. I was found and proved inspector just like Mr. Crawford. We were working together during the employee survey here in the government. What's I'm about to share from you is from the conversations we had at the time. Uh, well, I was invited to the employee survey for the first time, so I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know whether I should tell the interviewer everything about myself, so I asked Mr. Crawford how he has answered those questions. He said he didn't answer those questions honestly. I did not say that at all. I said I just spoke the whole truth. And he suggested me not to talk. So when I heard what Mr. Ryan said, I felt the same. This man, Ned Crawford, never took our role seriously. It was just full of lies. Who knows what a man like him will do if we set him free. You liar, Demian. Demian, wait, I never said those things to you. Of course you're denying, but look at how many of us are sharing the same truth about you. It's okay, Mr. Crawford. So, Mr. Kolosov, exactly, what exactly is your point? My point? Uh, yes, my point is Mr. Crawford is undoubtedly a fought criminal. That's it. I see, but there's something important missing here. What exactly is Mr. Crawford being accused of under fought crime? Without a specific charge, he just needs to go through educational programs to be corrected. And there shall not be any further liability for that, is there? You may get down, Mr. Kolosov. Oh, okay. Damn you, traitor. You're right, Mr. Cox. There is indeed a specific charge we want to put on him. If there is, why don't you tell us now? You wouldn't ask that question if you're a fan of our live trial program. The point of making good trial is always saving the best for the end. The art of escalation. And the testimonies today are just paving it up. With that said, I think it's about time to call it a day. Oh. Tomorrow, essential evidence will be Friday. With the live broadcast will go on. Dear sister, please don't forget the Grand Hall is now available for you to get your free food. Court dismissed. Okay, gentlemen, you'll have up to an hour to use this loud for now. Take your time, I'll be waiting outside. I can't believe Demian just slandered me like that. Why would he do that? You'll be surprised how easily the government can manipulate people. They'll probably have the goods on him or something. Right, he was so desperate to get back to the skyline, but Rupert, who was definitely planning on this since the beginning of that survey, wasn't him. Well, I knew things were wrong when I saw your name on that list. Normally it wouldn't be the, that early for you, Inspector. That's why we wanted to warn you. I know what you're thinking. Well, no matter how careful you are, an experienced interrogator will always find something to blame on you. That aside, we have a much more important thing to worry about right now. The plan. Yes, the plan. But you know what? At the very least, we already had a good start. We did. I wanted them to broadcast this trial live, and they did. I knew they just couldn't let this chance go. This chance proved to the people how much how they were right again about people who refused to follow their rules. With you, the son of Benjamin Crawford is the perfect example. How is this a good thing? The whole city's going to know me and hate me for it. It's a good thing because we're going to hack it at the end. Uh, what? I bet you've noticed how they've been talking to us remotely all the time. Let's use that against them. Our goal is to hack into that device and tell people the truth with that mouth they trust. The truth? Yeah, there's more besides that of rigged, of the rigged food distribution system. Like what? Like there's no such thing as dust pollution. The whole food security level system is made up. You put food in the air, and they'll actually go bad as time goes by. It has nothing to do with the dust. How do you know that? Research and experiments, of course. And we'll also tell people about the black bottles. With the things in them, people don't need to rely on the government to get food anymore. And that's the key to everything. 
Are you going to tell me what's in those bottles now? Sure, it's seeds. Seeds? Yeah, they look like little black pellets. You bury them in the soil and you water them and take care of them. Eventually they'll grow into all kinds of food. Fresh vegetables, for example. What? What kind of magic is that? There's nothing magical, Ned. It's all science. And that's just how food was produced before the crisis. Wow, someone should tell this to Trump. Even if that's true, this plan is still way too idealistic. The government will probably shut down the microphone or live broadcasting right away. And if they don't, how can you be sure that the people will, will just believe all that? And the seeds, they're clearly not enough for everyone, are they? If you want everything to be perfect just before you start doing something, that something will never be achieved. And you can never expect that we can change it all in one day. Every revolution has to have a start and we're aiming at making a good one. But yes, the government's going to hunt us down as soon as they find out about the hand. And that brings us to the sacrifice that has to be made. We're going to have to leave Eden, and we can't come back as long as this government rules. And only know, God knows when that would end. Are you willing to do that? I had my answer the day I made my mind up. Made up my mind to help you. Smile. Let's make history then. Here's what you're going to do first. Tomorrow morning at work, you have to sneak out three items. We made them look exactly the same as the other ones, so you have to identify them through their weight. All target items are weighed exactly 99. Should be easy to distinguish from the normal ones. Got it. But more importantly, you cannot make any mistakes at work. Whenever you fail, you will attract the attention of the supervisor. And if they find out about this, we're done. Did you think you can do that? I'll try. What are these items for? I'll explain tomorrow. We're running out of time here. Okay then. Now I have my faith in you. Now just go back and prepare yourself for a good sleep. See you here tomorrow. Well, I say, Mr. Crawford, the defence by your lawyer was pretty impressive. No offence, but it's been some time since I last enjoyed a trial like this. See you tomorrow, then. Always good. Hey, is this the last day? Could be. Could B. No mistakes, 99. I still can't believe the chance that I've always dreamt about being about to just arrive like that, but it carries much more than one man's life. My life. I've got to do this though. I want to do this. The mysterious man who called me several times, he seems to be a leader of D's. Bruce said, Quinn from D's being my lawyer, he said there's a plan to help both of us. Final mission one. I need to take away three items that weigh exactly 99 from work. Also to be avoid being noticed I can't make any mistake. Okay, no mistakes. Yeah. 
think this must be the last one. Okay, that's 
Сперца. Желтая. Mr. Crawford, your lawyer is already waiting in the lounge. Oh, thank you. Don't thank me, thank him. You've got yourself a good one. Alright, same rules as yesterday. Please leave the room as soon as you hear the alarm. Remember, we have a scheduled live broadcast to do. Hey, have you got them? Here, thank God. Maybe you don't know how important this is yet, but you did it. It's the first half of the mission. Just tell me, are these really the things you asked for? I'm kind of worried. Yes, they are. Quinn tears open the big worms. Look. Device A, device B, device C. Oh my god, these are parts of the hacking device. We can make it function by putting these three pieces together, but the device its signal cannot reach too far. That's why we've still got the second half of the mission. What is it? Tomorrow morning we'll be able to get three of our men inside the government building, and they will be passing through the underground recycling pipeline once. All you need to do is throw those three parts separately into the recycle hole at three specific times. So they can bring the parts to the floor below us and set the device up. Wait, at three specific times? That's impossible. There's no way to know about time down there. There is one, actually. You can count the number of items. What? Well, it actually moves at an average speed, so we can get the approximate time by items past. And I guess I cannot make any mistakes like last time. Exactly. There's nearly the same as... That's nearly the same as impossible. Do you have any idea how many things I have to take care of at the same time? I can't imagine keeping count under that situation. Well, do you know what makes it more impossible? Flinch when doing it. Oh, okay, no time for a pep talk. You know we don't have a choice now. I'm just going to tell you when to throw those three parts down the hole. You may want to get this down on paper. First, there isn't a specific order required in the throwing of parts. Well, that's something at least. Second, look out for the 5th, 12th and 20th item showing up on the belt. 5th, 12th, 20th. Whenever you see the 5th, 12th and 20th item, you have about 5 seconds to throw one part of the, of the device down the hole. And lastly, make no mistakes. Same reason as yesterday. That's it. Just in time. Got it into your head? Yeah, perfect. It's going to be a showdown soon. Let's see what they've got for us today. Oh my god, I'm going to fail this so hard. Okay, Mr. Crawford and Mr. Cox, the travel start very soon. Please be seated for the calling. Good evening, dear citizens. I think the broadcast just went live now. Sorry for the waiting. Today we'll pretty much conclude the case of Food Inspector Ned Crawford. Some last pieces of evidence that we deem most important will be presented. Without further ado, the defendant, please come up to the stage. And also, let's bring our first witness out. Here I call Elodie Corey. Elodie, you're going to betray me too. Elodie. Elodie? So, Miss Corey. Please introduce yourself. I work at Easy Family Restaurant, which is one of the designated restaurants for the Skyline workers. Is that enough? How about your relationship with our dependent Ned Crawford here? You were high school classmates and I've delivered food to his booth several times in the past month. Good. According to the transcript we have in the interview, you said Mr. Crawford asked you about your spin. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Why? I think it's just his old interest. Lost Boys found a callback in high school days. And besides that, didn't he ask you something strange? The sea water. I'll admit it's that's the best house of my expectation. You know, there's nothing much to do or think about there. All we need is the truth. We don't need you to speak to him here. Sorry. 
So once again, can you confirm that he asked you about those two things in the last few weeks? Yes, good, I think that's enough from this point. That's all. Stuff, please show her out. Knit. Now, Mr. Cox, do you have anything to say before we move on? Yes, I do. I just want to back up what Mr. Corey said about that. Now. Spinners and Sea Wars, I think we were at least allowed to talk about them, right? Of course, as long as there's no further implication. Further implication? With all due respect, I don't see any of them. Well, you may say that for now, but wait until we show you what we found in his booth. Shall we welcome our last witness out? Who I call Last Year Lynn. Selene is mainly in charge of Skyline Work and Shopping Service, but also she has another report to class. Why don't you tell us about it? Sure. I have a responsibility to search the of any suspects for evidence. That's right. As soon as Mr. Foreman was supposed to became a suspect, I had to search and did it what is here. After Selene's first bit, we found a black box which was clearly smuggled from the outside and contained some black powder. This dangerous looking black powder is so special that experts soon managed to identify it to be a bomb material used in Dean's tanks. Uh oh. She only left that there. Yes, that's what we found, the last piece of the puzzle. Thank you, officer, for this crucial piece of evidence. You may leave now. Uh-oh. I did leave them, I believe. Dear judges, with that, I think everything seems much more clear. Everything our previous witness said has makes much more sense now. Why would Mr. Crawford commit malfeasance? Why would Mr. Crawford have fought problems? Why would Mr. Crawford ask Miss Corey about spinners and our seaboard? And the answer is very simple, because he is one of the demons. All the evidence points to the conclusion that has been helping Eden the whole time, and he was either planning on more smuggling or planning on escaping Eden after being exposed. And he committed the worst kind of fault crimes, just like his father. He tried to bring chaos and danger to the city we tried so hard to build and maintain for our people, and he did it after we put our best trust in him. Now, Mr. Cox, do you have anything to say? No, I don't. Good, as I expected. You can give your final statement tomorrow. Oh, good work, Dean. Dear judges, due to the time limit, we should stop here today. Tomorrow should be the end of this entire trial. Your patience is much appreciated. Please get your reward if you're at all dismissed. All right, gentlemen. One hour to use this lounge like yesterday. I'll be waiting outside. So, that was it. It's their last punch. Why didn't you say something to that? Haven't I told you we're bound to fail the trial? They would do anything to set you up. Anything. And why were you defending you so hard? That's all performance fantasy. So that today we can make them believe you we were defeated by their last punch. What? So they'll let their guard down and be less vigilant. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. Don't tell me you still have hopes of getting out of this free. Can't you see that even prepared, they even prepared normal people to testify against you? You mean Elodie? She wouldn't sell me out like that. They must have threatened her or something. It's a good thing to have someone you can trust. But whether she's with the government or not, soon you won't be able to see her. Sorry, I didn't mean to discourage you. Let's just focus on tomorrow now. That's the best shot we have to help her. Oops. So, remember what I told you? The 5th, the 12th and the 20th. Exactly. Okay, we shouldn't use this room for that long today. You ready for the mission? <sighs> Strangely, yes. Finally had enough of it after 15 years, right? Tomorrow is the day. Let's go get them. We can't beat evidence with words after all. No comment on the case, but I do have a slight hope for you until today. But I did have a slight hope for you until today. Enjoy your last night here, Mr. Crawford. If it's our last day, we may as well eat that. Okay. Um, this seems like a really appropriate place to stop for today. Thank you very much for watching this part. We'll be back with the next part tomorrow. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Have a good day. Goodbye.